What is up guys, it's Modern Warfare here and welcome back to a episode of Coding Tutorials, the first episode. Um, well, this is episode zero. Now, the reason I'm doing an episode zero is simply because this video is going to be showing you guys how to install everything so that you've got everything ready for coding tutorials, essentially. I'd rather show you guys how to get everything set up from the beginning so that you don't have to worry about any of that stuff later on. Uh, in other videos in the future of this series, we can just uh, focus on the coding itself. So the whole point of this series is that we are going to be creating real-time editing mod tools, RTE tools. We're going to uh, code some mod tools and uh, yeah, we'll just work our way up and get more and more advanced hopefully as we go on. So um, first of all, we need to have everything set up and there's quite a lot of things to install. So that's why there's an episode zero right now. So what we need is we need Visual Studio 2013. 2013 is the version I'm going to use you can use other versions of Visual Studio if you want. 2010 is quite a good one to use. 2015, I'm not sure, I haven't tried, or 2012. There's a bunch of different versions of Visual Studio. Um, but they do change some subtle little things in each version. So I'm just used to 2013. I'm not going to upgrade to 2015 in case they've moved some stuff around. And I don't want that for the tutorials for me to be searching for stuff. Uh, so yeah, Visual Studio 2013. We're going to need uh, the Xbox 360 software development kit. I'm going to need uh, xdevkit.dll, um, so a bunch of uh, libraries, there's xdevkit, there's jrpc and xrpc, these are the source code files for jrpc and xrpc rather than the actual uh, .dll files that people use. We're going to use the source code files because it's, it's just tidier to have them inside your program rather than as an external dll file that you have to provide with the, with the software. And we're also going to need xdevkit++. This just, just this just adds a bunch of extra options, um, which are quite handy. I like to use that as well, so we're going to be adding that. And we've also got devcomponents.netbar, which is uh, for themes, different kind of themes on our applications to make them look a bit better than the default Windows themes that you get with Visual Studio. And we also need to install jrpc.xcx, rpc.xcx, and xbdm.xcx on the console itself in order to establish an RTE connection between the program which is using the source code files and the console which will be running the XEX files. Okay so let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is install the software development kit for the Xbox 360. Double click that. Now this program, this is huge. This one EXE is like, I can't, don't know, it's a, it's a good amount of gigabytes so it may take a while to open. 1.42 gigs on just for just a single exe what you're going to do is you're going to click next 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 um, if it gives you the option to do a full installation do a full installation it will work with minimum installation and click next and just let this install and it will take a little while to install once it's finished you just click finish and it should create an xbox 360 neighborhood icon on your desktop and in programs you should find that you will have, oh I'll also open up the release notes, but in program files you will have the Xbox 360 SDK in here, which gives you a bunch of development kit tools for the Xbox 360. And now what we need to do is we need to install our plugins on the console to establish a connection between the software development kit and the console itself. So you obviously you need your um, Xbox 360 to be connected to your local area network, along with your computer needs to be connected to your local area network as well. So I'm going to create a new folder, I'm just going to call this one uh, plugins. You're also going to need dash launch, I have a separate tutorial on dash launch, it's JTAG tutorials episode 3. I'll link that in the description or on screen so you can uh, go ahead and look at that if you haven't already. So I'm going to just drag my um, three plugins, my XEX files, those are the ones that need to go in the console or the .xex files. I'm going to drag those into a folder, put this folder on a USB stick and then plug it into your console and I'll show you guys how to uh, get that all set up on the console. Okay, and once we are onto the console, what you're gonna want to do is obviously plug in your USB stick and then on XTX menu, you want to go ahead and enter the plugins folder and press Y on the first XTX, press A to copy it, press X, head to HDD1, press Y and press A to paste it in the root of your internal hard drive. And you want to do this with every single one. Now, I'm not doing them because I've already got these plugins installed, but you would just go through, press Y, paste, and it will ask you to overwrite if there was already one there, but obviously there won't be for you. 
and that will have them installed right there. So that is basically it. That's how you get those plugins on the hard drive. The next thing you want to do is open up Dash Launch and run that. If you don't have Dash Launch, again, episode 3 of JTAG Tutorials shows you how to do that, which will be linked in the description. Head into the Plugins folder, and then you just want to add the plugins in here. So let's, let me say I want to uh, re-add XRPC. Then I would press A on Plugin 2. So I press A on Plugin 2, and then I would head to the HDD the location where I copied the file, there's uh, RPC, I'd press A to select it, and now it's in my plugins list. You want it listed in this order. You want plugin 1 to be XBDM, you want plugin 2 to be RPC, and you want plugin 3 to be JRPC. And then you can press right bumper, go over to HTD, press uh, A to select it, press X to save settings to launch.ini, and then press B to back out back to the dashboard. And that's you've got those plugins installed. As long as the um, dashboard is on the local area network, which you can press uh, back, as long as the console, I mean, is on the local area network and it has a valid IP address, you should be able to connect to it through Xbox 360 Neighborhood. So I'll go over to the computer now and show you guys how to get everything else set up. Okay, so back over to the computer, we can delete our plugins now that they're on the console, and we're going to open up Xbox 360 Neighborhood and we should be able to connect to the console. So if we add Xbox 360, we click Next, a lot of the times you can just type in JTAG and click next and it will connect as it did there. If not, you can type in the IP address of the console, which I had up on screen just earlier. For me it was uh, 1.149 and that should work as well. Um, so you can use either JTAG or the IP address. If JTAG doesn't work, then use the IP address and it will add the console in here. You want to make sure it has a little orange tick next to it to show that it is um, connected and it is set to the default Xbox 360. Okay, so now that you have done that, the next thing we can do is install Visual Studio 2013. So this is a ISO, it comes as a, a disk image file. I think you can download it as source or something, but I downloaded it as um, ISO. So if you have the program WinRAR, you can right click, you can open with WinRAR and or 7-zip would probably do the, do the trick as well. And then just extract I'll create a new folder called um, Visual Studio and we'll go ahead and extract everything in here. Okay guys, so this has taken absolutely ages to extract but it's finally done. So once I've extracted it, I'm going to run the vs underscore ultimate file. And I can right click and run it as administrator. All the links for everything will be in the description if I haven't already said that. Um, so for all the files that you see me installing, they'll all be linked in the description for you to download. So we're going to go ahead and run this VS Ultimate and then just run through the installer here. Okay, and you'll get to the welcome screen and you just click continue. Um, I'm just going to install it into the default location, so agree to the terms and conditions. You get a free 30-day trial of uh, Visual Studio Ultimate 2013, uh, which is quite handy. It should be a good start, a uh, good amount of time for you guys to... Uh, you know, start learning how to ins how to uh, create these tools. So I'm gonna just install everything and just let it go, let it install. This may take a while. Visual Studio is quite a large um, software package, so just uh, give it time to install. Okay, guys, we now have Visual Studio installed. Once it finishes installing, it's gonna ask you to restart your computer. You should now have it in here. Here we go, Visual Studio 2013. So we're gonna run this. Okay, and when it opens we can uh, create a new project just as a test so we're going to create a new project here and call it test project and what we want is uh, C sharp <clears throat> is the programming language we're going to be using for coding RTE tools and we're going to create a basic Windows form application and click OK to start that okay and here we go we've got our form up here now the thing we need for RTE connections, we need X Dev Kit. We also need, of course, um, our XRPC and JRPC. Well, it depends. You can just use XRPC or you can just use JRPC. Um, it's up to you, but I like to add them both in anyway. So because they are simply um, source code files, the same with X Dev Kit as well. All we have to do is just basically right click on the project and we can click add. And then we can say we want to add a new item or add an existing item. So to add an existing item, go to desktop 
and you can see I've got JRPC, XRPC and XDevKit. I'm going to add those in. They have added in here. We could put them in a folder as well. We could put them in certain folders, but for now they should do fine in there. And then we need to add XDevKit. Now XDevKit is a DLL file, so we need to add this in as a reference. So the way we do that is we go into References, we just right click on References, Add a Reference. And we want to browse the computer for a reference. So we click the Browse button, go into Desktop, we find XDevKit.DLL, we add it, and we click OK. And that's added XDevKit in there. So now, in order to actually use these, we need to um, go into the code. But before we get started on that, we need to go ahead and install .NET Bar. What .NET Bar does is it gives us some more styling options for our forms. During coding tutorials, if you decide not to use .NET Bar, because it's not a free application, so if you decide not to use .NET Bar, you can still follow everything I'll do in coding tutorials using Windows toolbox items and Windows forms. The only difference, I mean, they're pretty much the same. The only difference is the styling options. So .NET Bar gives you more uh, styling options to make the forms look a bit nicer. Uh, which is why we're going to be installing it, but you can get by without it, essentially. So it's not a free application, as I mentioned, it's a trial. You can get about, I think it's a 28 day trial, and I'll show you how to install the trial version in this video. There is a cracked version, I can't show you how to install that for obvious reasons, but um, it's literally a Google search away. I'm pretty sure most people uh, who make RTE tools with .NET Bar are probably using that cracked version, but Obviously, I can't show you how to install that in this video, but it's literally a Google search away. And you can obviously pay for it if you have the money. I think it's $260 uh, per developer, which is pretty pricey. But, uh, you know, software development stuff like that does cost a lot. So anyway, here's how we install the trial. Just extract. Um, again, link will be in the description. Go ahead and extract the WinRAR archive. Open up the program, run the setup.exe, just a normal Windows installer. And just click next, accept license, next, next, install. Okay, and once it's finished installing, you want to uncheck the box uh, to launch the samples and go ahead and click finish. That's it guys, we've got everything installed. So to add everything into Visual Studio, all you have to do is right click on the form one, on whatever form you're building. And we will take, well, we can go straight into the code or you can right click on form one.cs and click view code. And we're in the code. And then you just want to add everything that you've added. So if we want to add uh, .NET bar, we add using, in fact, I haven't even added it as a reference. That's another thing we need to do to get .NET Bar in here. Right click on References, add another reference. So then you just want to go to Extensions, select .NET Bar and add that in. And there, .NET Bar is now in there. So now what we need to do is you just need to go into the project again and add all of these in. So we say using dev components .NET Bar. And then we can also say using jrpc if we're using jrpc be jrpc underscore client so if we want to add xdevkit we say you or xdevkit plus plus is what we want to use so if we type in x and um, we've got xdevkit plus plus and if we want to use xrpc as well we would say using xrpc lib and what else is there anything else we need to add nope i think that's it so that is it we've now got our project ready for an RTE tool. We're now ready to make our RTE tool out of what we have here. So another thing I forgot to mention when you add .NET Bar in is that you will not get the toolbox options. So in order to get the toolbox options, you need to right click and create, well, click toolbox first of all, which is up here in the left, and then right click in a blank space and you want to add a tab, call it something like .NET Bar or Dev Components or whatever you want to call it. So you then want to right click on it and you want to select choose items and it'll load all the different items. Then you want to click browse, browse for the location where .NET Bar is uh, stored, which was C program files 86 .NET Bar for Windows forms. Select the .NET Bar 2.dll file and click open. And when you do this, it will select them all. You can just click OK. And now you will get access to all of the .NET Bar toolbox items right here. And this is good because in our coding tutorial series we're going to be using all of these 
where it's very unlikely we're going to be using the normal Windows ones. We're probably going to be using the .NET Bar ones instead. So that's it. That's how you get everything fully set up, ready for the proper coding tutorials where we're going to be actually coding something. Uh, in this video, we're just setting everything up. So hopefully uh, you've got everything set up and ready now. If you have, and if you like this video, go ahead and leave it a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Shuffling